The animation begins with a person named Megamind. In the past, he used to be a bad guy. But then a hero named Metro Man showed up to stop him and other criminals in Metro City. Surprisingly, Megamind managed to defeat Metro Man and took over the city. But ruling the city turned out to be boring for him. So Megamind came up with a plan to make things exciting again. He created a new hero named Titan. But instead of being a good guy, Titan turned out to be even worse than Megamind imagined. Megamind realized his mistake and decided to fix things. He fought against Titan and managed to defeat him. In the end, Megamind became a true hero and was praised as the protector of Metro City. One night, three people dressed up as fish, forming a fishing gang, sneaked into a big aquarium to steal a special diamond koi fish. Luckily, Megamind and his friend Minion, who now goes by the name Boy Chum, showed up to stop them. At that time, they tried to stop the thieves, but one of the crooks made a shark from the aquarium nearly swallow them. However, Megamind used his weapon to turn the shark into a small blue cube. Even though Megamind managed to lock up the thieves with his robot laser, the robot got damaged and the thieves escaped. But Megamind didn't give up. He and his friends chased after them. The thieves started attacking them using a fish-shaped tank. Despite being trapped, Megamind stayed calm. He and his friend came up with a plan to stop the thieves. Eventually, they defeated the crooks and handed them over to the police to be put in prison. Meanwhile, a reporter named Roxanne is reporting from Metro City Hall. She's talking about how crime has gone down, thanks to Megamind. After her report, she meets a girl named Kiko, who is the president of an online fan club for Megamind. At that time, Keiko wants to interview Roxanne about her heroic actions with Megamind. At first, Roxanne doesn't want to talk, but Keiko convinces her. Roxanne admits she's not happy as a reporter. Then Keiko encourages her to find inspiration. Sadly, Keiko has to leave for an important event. It turns out to be a ceremony where the mayor gives Megamind the city guard's golden key. But Megamind's friend, Chum, feels upset because he thinks Megamind treats him like a servant. So Chum leaves with the golden key. Later, Chum meets Roxanne by a car and tells her how Megamind has changed. There, Roxanne advises Chum to talk to Megamind about his feelings. Long story short, Chum really wanted Megamind to see him as more than just someone who helps out. At first, Chum was nervous to talk to Megamind about it. But Roxanne kept encouraging herself to give it a shot once Megamind finished talking. To make it short, when Megamind was done with his show, a girl named Keiko came to see him and asked him some questions. She even gave him a pin. But Megamind wasn't very nice to Keiko, especially when she wanted to team up with him. He turned down all her ideas. But later, feeling bad about how he treated her, Megamind gave her a ball with a button as a gift. Then, it was Chum's turn to try out Roxanne's suggestions. He tried talking to Megamind about being more than just a helper. But Megamind said no. Then they argued, and Chum ended up leaving the team. At that moment, Roxanne got mad at Megamind for letting Chum leave so easily. But Megamind thinks it's just a trick to get Chum to come back, and he's sure Chum will return. Soon after, Megamind drove home, leaving Roxanne behind. On another side, there were four villains grouped together, calling themselves the Doom Syndicate. Their names were Doppler, Pierre Behemoth, and also Lord Nighty Knight. At that time, Pierre found it funny that there were four of them instead of just three. They got ready to carry out their plan to confront Megamind. But turns out all four of them were actually in prison. Despite that, they used their strength to break free. And eventually, they managed to escape. Meanwhile, Roxanne was driving and listening to the radio casually when suddenly, a hologram of Megamind popped up, surprising her. Long story short, Megamind needed her help urgently. Without wasting time, Roxanne headed straight to Megamind's headquarters. Once she reached the headquarters, Roxanne hurried to find Megamind. She discovered him struggling in the kitchen, trying to bake bread and even make pancakes for himself to eat. Roxanne felt a bit worried because she thought Megamind might be in trouble. After Roxanne helped sort out the kitchen trouble, an alarm rang out, startling Megamind. He hoped it might be Chum, but it turned out to be the Doom Syndicate, which was his old team of villains. The next day, they came to congratulate Megamind for his heroic deeds, though he was really a villain pretending to be a hero. This made Megamind uncomfortable, because deep down, he wanted to be a real hero. To avoid disappointing his friends, Megamind lied to them. But then Roxanne appeared from the kitchen, causing his old friends to become suspicious, especially Doppler who knew Roxanne. To cover it up, Megamind claimed Roxanne was his evil partner, and he whispered to her to help him keep up the deception. 
Then, once Roxanne agreed to pretend to be Megamind's bride, Doppler objected, leading to a fight between them. Thankfully, Behemoth intervened and stopped the fight. Roxanne then suggested talking to Megamind in the kitchen. There, Roxanne asked Megamind about his past with the Doom Syndicate team, and he explained that he was actually the founder. He also revealed his evil plans with the Doom Syndicate before becoming a hero, which made Roxanne uneasy about helping him lie. However, Megamind continued to persuade her, and eventually she agreed. They rejoined the Doom Syndicate team, where Doppler discussed their next evil plan to take control of Metro City and renaming it Megamind City. Despite Megamind being the leader, they ignored his input and rushed to execute the plan, leaving Megamind and Roxanne behind. Determined to stop the criminals, Megamind and Roxanne made their own plans to prevent the city's destruction. Now Megamind is chasing after his former criminal friends who are causing chaos in Metro City. At that time, Megamind tries to act like a bad guy in front of his friends, so they won't find out he's lying. During the commotion, he sees Keiko recording everything. She doesn't notice as a TV knocked over by Doppler falls on her, but luckily, Megamind saves her. Later, Megamind tells Keiko he's pretending to be a criminal. She wants to help, but he insists it's too risky and asks her to go home. Meanwhile, Megamind and the other villains head to the bank for their next plan, to rob it. When they get to the bank, the criminals ask Megamind to lead the robbery. But when he goes in, everyone inside treats him like a hero because of his past good deeds. At the same time, Megamind's villain friends see this too, so he's forced to go through with the robbery, scaring the bank owner in the process. Thankfully, Keiko arrived just in time and calmed the situation down. She explained that Megamind was just doing a safety drill, where everyone in the bank pretended they were being robbed. Megamind's villain friends saw this and seemed happy that he was still acting like himself, except for Doppler, who remained suspicious of Megamind's behavior. Meanwhile, Roxanne tried to talk to the mayor about what happened, but the mayor had already heard that Megamind was with the villains. Soon after, Roxanne helped the mayor with the next steps and left the criminal matter to Megamind. Meanwhile, Megamind was alone in his room missing Chum. He wished Chum was there with him, believing that things would be better if he was, but he tried not to dwell on it and decided to handle the problem on his own. Suddenly, there was a noise coming from the headquarters hall. It turned out that Megamind's villain friends were inviting everyone to a farewell party with the people of Metro City. This annoyed Megamind, and he tried to stop the party. But his plans were interrupted when Doppler brought in three criminals dressed as fish. They wanted to expose Megamind's disguise, but he managed to distract everyone's attention by focusing on the party. This made one of the fish costume villains angry and they tried to catch Megamind. Instead, Megamind captured them and turned them into small cubes. Meanwhile, Chum is working at a burger shop as a toilet cleaner. He's trying to suggest ideas to expand his boss's business by introducing automatic machines in the kitchen and adding a new menu item that can sell donuts. Shortly after, Roxanne arrived at Megamind's headquarters with a muffin, curious about what had happened there. Then she met Megamind in the hall where he was discussing plans to deal with the issues caused by the Doom Syndicate in the city. But their discussion was interrupted when members of the Syndicate showed up, asking about Megamind's next phase for Metro City. As Roxanne listened, Megamind presented his brain robot and revealed his plan to move Metro City to the moon, which excited his colleagues. However, Roxanne questioned how they would move such a large city. Megamind revealed that he had been secretly building a massive rocket underground for the past six months, surprising Roxanne and prompting a serious discussion. Suddenly, the Doom Syndicate pressured Megamind to launch the rocket immediately. But Megamind confessed that he couldn't remember the password to the launch room. This made Doppler suspicious and angry. But Megamind managed to convince the Doom Syndicate member to leave, though feeling disappointed. Unfortunately, these problems were starting to weigh heavily on Megamind. He felt overwhelmed and couldn't handle everything on his own. But Roxanne brought some hope reminding him that he wasn't alone. He had Roxanne and Chum by his side. Thinking about what Chum had said, Megamind deeply regretted leaving his best friend. Soon after, they went to where Chum worked, a donut shop. They were surprised to find that it used to be an unknown burger joint. But thanks to Chum's innovations, it had become a popular spot. They couldn't even get in without a reservation. Luckily, Keiko showed up with a clever plan to get them inside without a reservation. Thanks to her quick thinking, Megamind and Roxanne were able to enter the donut shop. Chum noticed them and welcomed them warmly, asking Megamind why he was there. 
Unfortunately, just as Megamind was about to have a serious conversation with Chum, someone dressed as a donut arrived. Chum's new boss. The boss praised Chum for his great ideas at the restaurant, showing that he valued Chum not just as an employee but as a friend and colleague. This made Chum really happy, but it also made Megamind give up on asking Chum to come back to work with him. He realized that Chum deserved to be happy where he was. Chum had stopped Megamind from leaving earlier because he wanted to hear what Megamind had to say. But unfortunately, Megamind didn't tell him the truth. Outside, Roxanne and Keiko met Megamind and asked him what happened. Megamind explained that Chum was happy where he was and didn't need to be involved. He decided to tackle the problem on his own and left in his private car, which had just arrived. Roxanne and Keiko worried about Megamind's safety as he drove away. When Megamind reached his headquarters, his Doom Syndicate friends were waiting for him. He still hadn't figured out how to solve the problem they faced. But then, Behemoth sparked a brilliant idea in Megamind's mind. He wanted to catch them using his robot laser. This action annoyed the villains, who questioned why he did it. Megamind explained that he had changed for the better, but his efforts failed. Even the prison he created had flaws. To make matters worse, the sweat from Megamind's forehead caused the three villains in fish costumes to revert to their original forms. Now Megamind was in real trouble. The members of the Doom Syndicate, along with the three fish costume villains, were chasing him. However, he managed to escape, only for Doppler to blow him up into space. Surprisingly, Megamind survived and landed in a river far from Metro City. There he felt deeply disappointed in himself. Meanwhile, Roxanne and Keiko were searching for Megamind. Luckily, Keiko had placed a tracking device on him, making it easier to locate him. When they reached the spot, they found only Megamind's pin. But then they spotted Megamind disguised with a beard. Roxanne tried to encourage him to lift himself up from his low spirits. Soon after, Keiko joined in, sharing her own experience of being bullied for her appearance. She learned from Megamind that being true to yourself is important, regardless of what others think. Despite their efforts, Megamind still couldn't find the strength to stand up. He felt like he had let down the entire city by failing to be a hero on his own. Then, Roxanne stepped in once more, explaining that asking for help doesn't make him weak. Her words had a positive effect, and Megamin began to feel inspired again. He decided he needed to visit Chum and confess that he needed help from a friend. Suddenly, Chum appeared, surprising Megamind. There, Megamin poured out his heart and asked Chum for help, not just as an errand boy, but as a friend. Chum was thrilled to hear this. Meanwhile, the Doom Syndicate was trying to break into the launch room, while Megamind and his friends were planning to stop them. The villains were busy trying to open the steel door leading to the launch control room. Eventually, they managed to open the door and enter the room together. But then, Megamind appeared on the control screen, causing the villains to rush to arrest him and Roxanne. However, this was all part of their plan to distract the villains so that Chum and Keiko could sneak into the rocket control room. When Chum entered through the ventilation, the base intruder alarm went off, forcing him to dodge the weapons aimed at him. But then, flying robots posed a new threat, trying to capture him. Meanwhile, Megamind and Roxanne were busy diverting the villain's attention by shooting tennis balls at them. At the same time, Chum found himself trapped but managed to escape from it, allowing him to navigate in his original fish-like form. However, just as he was about to stop the launch, three criminals dressed as fish appeared. With the launch time nearing, the whole city was in big trouble. Meanwhile, Roxanne began to worry, but Megamind assured her that Chum would handle his part well. Unfortunately, at the last moment, the launch went ahead despite their efforts. To make matters worse, they ran out of tennis balls for ammunition and had to split up to plan their next move. Soon after, Roxanne headed into town and found the mayor amidst a panicked crowd. She asked him for a plan, but he seemed clueless and fled, causing further panic. Thankfully, Keiko arrived and communicated via radio, giving Roxanne a plan. Roxanne then urged everyone to work together according to their roles. Meanwhile, Megamind and Chum continued trying to stop the launch, with Chum giving his all despite exhaustion. Eventually, he succeeded, but he was worn out from being out of the water for too long. Megamind faced his own troubles as they found themselves in outer space with the rockets shutting off, causing them to fall rapidly. To top it off, they had to confront the Doom Syndicate. Unfortunately, Megamind found himself trapped, facing the four villains with little chance of defeating them. But he came up with a clever plan to pit the villains against each other by making them fight for the title of leader. Seizing the opportunity, Megamind escaped, 
but the villains caught on to his trick and chased after him. While hiding, Mega Man contacted Chum to activate manual control, but Chum couldn't do it without his larger body. So Mega Man launched a parrot-shaped robot to assist Chum, ensuring his safety and making him very grateful. However, Mega Man was still stuck. Not one to give up easily, Mega Man devised another plan. He cleverly tricked Lord Nighty Knight into transforming into his image by placing his watch on the Dark Knight. With this distraction, Mega Man moved forward with his plan to defeat the four members of the Doom Syndicate. As he faced Behemoth, Roxane arrived on a fire truck and managed to hit Behemoth. But their victory was short lived as Lord Nighty Knight, who had escaped Pierre's hypnosis, arrived to interrupt them. Fortunately, Keiko arrived and used a grenade provided by Megamund to paralyze Lord Nighty Knight. With the Syndicate defeated, they still had to save the city, which was still falling. They rushed to find Chum and together pulled the lever to safely deploy the landing rope, ultimately landing safely on the city's side. After the crisis, Roxanne was appointed as the new mayor of Metro City due to the previous mayor's negligence. In the end, Megamind, Chum, Roxanne, and Keiko formed a team to protect Metro City from villains. The animation ends. The moral lesson from this animation is always carry spare tennis balls because you never know when you'll need to distract villains or play a quick game of catch in outer space. And don't forget, if you're ever stuck in a sticky situation, just call upon your trusty parrot-shaped robot for backup.